footsteps behind you as you enter the woods. Night draws back its cave. Night illumines your path. Open your eyes. Listen. Welcome to Dark Softly Tales. Dark stories for dark hearts. I'm Mav Sky. Good evening, and welcome to your nightmares. Just kidding. It just happens to be the very first episode of Dark Softly Tales. I'm your host, Mav, and I am so excited to get this podcast going. I have a ton of ideas of what I'd like to do with this, so please hang in there with me as we organically grow this lovely new creature birthed of a thousand imaginations, one of which is yours. The China Doll story is specifically inspired by my mother. My grandfather was in the Navy, and they traveled all over the world. My mother picked up some pretty fantastic stories to tell around the campfire, or late at night in my grandmother's dining room, probably when she was trying to get us to fall asleep. Not that this story helped in that department, but maybe that's why I love horror stories at bedtime. But the story my mom loved to tell the most was the China doll. She would scrape the nail with her fingernails and slowly hiss, really getting into the gory details as she told the story. And I swear that the more she told the story, the more horrific the details grew. Ironically, My grandmother had several china dolls sitting up on a shelf, and I couldn't help but stare at them, waiting for the turn of a head or a blink of an eye. I'd inspect the doll's delicate little fingers, looking for the blood-red polish, which, of course, was there. I also had to check my bedroom door at night to make sure it didn't have the three scrapes that the china doll would leave, if she was going to kill you. Thankfully, I never saw those. And obviously, because I'm still here. I've since looked up the China Doll story on the internet, and every version I found paled in comparison to the way my mother's told the story. If I were to tell you exactly the way she told me, I feel like that would steal the magic out of her words and her own storytelling. So this is my version of the China Doll. I hope you feel all the wonder and all the shivers as I read it to you, as I felt all those years ago as my mother told me. The story will be broken up between several episodes. This is the first. Turn off the light, wrap a warm blanket around your shoulders, and together, let's fall down deep where the dead dream and the worms crawl. Take my hand and hang on tight as we journey into the dark softly. The China Doll by Mav Sky. A package had come in the mail. It was wrapped in a brown paper grocery bag and addressed with a sharpie in Daddy's print handwriting. It wasn't addressed to Mother or to her little brother Jeffrey, but to her very own self, Sable Lynn Gray. It may have been storming outside, but inside her home, with a fire purring over dry logs and her mother baking chocolate chip cookies, nothing could have been better than tonight. Even her little brother Jeffrey was behaving himself in the high chair, gurgling when mother paused from her cooking and baking to make sure he wasn't choking on the tiny pieces of apple she had given him. Sable sat at the coffee table by the couch, gazing at the package. Occasionally, she'd touch it, wishing she could magically interpret what was inside the package. Every time her fingers tapped over the paper, her mother would say, Sable, honey, wait till after supper, and then we'll open it. 
and Sable would draw back her hands, fold them in her lap, and bounce on her knees. Daddy had sent only two packages since he'd been gone on the big ships. He was in the Navy, but Sable wasn't sure what the Navy meant, other than it was a color in her crayon box. She asked her mother several times, and she would always reply, Daddy is away on a big ship, protecting us from bad guys. And Sable would say, How could he protect me when he's that far away? Her mother never answered her on that. Sable leaned over the coffee table, reading her name on the package again, then gazing over the address in the upper left-hand corner. She recognized her daddy's name, Eric Gray, but the address looked like the A, B, C's in reverse. Then the next word struck her curiosity, J-A-P-A-N. She called out, Mama, where's Japan? Far away. Is that where the bad guys are? No, they're good guys now. Jeffrey started to cry, and by the sounds of splats on the floor, he was throwing his food. Sable heard the sink faucet come on, and the sound of a dish rag wiping, and then Jeffrey crying again. Sable scrunched her face, thinking. She stood and walked back to the kitchen. Mother had finished wiping the floor and was rinsing out the rag. Jeffrey banged his chubby palms on his high chair impatiently. Mother hustled over to the stove, stirred the stew, then opened the oven and took out the last batch of cookies. Sable knew that if she ate all her supper, her mother would let her have two cookies with a glass of milk. Sable walked over to Jeffrey and offered him her pinky. He smiled and clutched at it. Sable wiggled her pinky around, cringing when he drew it to his mouth and slobbered all over it. Ew. She asked her mother, If the bad guys turned good, does that mean Daddy will come home soon? Jeffrey suddenly shoved her pinky away and began crying. Sable frowned and wiped her slimy finger on her pants. Her mother whisked over from the stove to Jeffrey's high chair, soothing him in her tired voice. She slipped the baby out of the top of the high chair and he waved his arms, screaming like he was being pinched. Sable asked again, Is Daddy coming home soon? Mother's voice now was sharp. Sable, please, we've talked about... Jeffrey yanked her hair, and Mother didn't finish her sentence. She rushed out of the kitchen, and Sable followed her to the hallway, then paused when Mother went into Jeffrey's bedroom and closed the door. Sable walked back into the living room and sat on her knees, leaning into the coffee table, the warm fire at her back. She began to trace the letters of her carefully printed name when a big burst of raindrops nailed the living room window. Sable leapt to her feet, ran to the window, and closed the heavy curtains to the outside world. The sounds of the scary storm dimmed, and she walked back to the package. The living room was darker now. The fireplace crackled. Once more, Sable traced her finger gently along the sides of the paper package when she heard another frightening noise. It sounded like a scrape of a long, pointed nail. The noise wasn't coming from outside this time. It wasn't coming from the fireplace or Jeffrey's bedroom. It was coming from inside the package. Sable paused her finger on the package and the scratching stopped. Curious. She moved her finger and one quick swoop down the brown paper, and the scratching mimicked her with a swift scrape. The mystery of the package deepened in Sable's mind. Perhaps her father had put a gerbil inside. She quite liked gerbils, but Mother would never let her have one because she said they tended to escape. Sable had tried to convince her mother that she would never let it escape and that the gerbil would stay safe forever because it would love her and she would love it. Mother later had bought her goldfish. Sable had named it Orangey, and despite feeding Orangey every single day, the goldfish died. And that was sad. 
Though Mother had told her that it would make friends with other fishies, for many had been flushed down the toilet to the afterlife. Sable had heard of this afterlife before. It was where you went after you died. Despite what Mother had said, Sable dearly hoped that the afterlife did not require being flushed down the toilet, because that was gross. The scratching inside the package distracted Sable from her thoughts. This time, there was a single tap inside, right under her printed name. Sable tapped back. It tapped back twice. And Sable mimicked it like Simon says. She went to tap on it three times to see if it would copy her. But then her finger halted over it as it made a long, terrible scrape down the entire length of the package. The scraping sounded sharp like a knife. Sable drew her hand away. A funny feeling fluttered in her chest. She didn't think there was a gerbil inside the package anymore. She listened intently, but the noise didn't happen again. She scooted away from the coffee table and sat by the fire, watching the package. And soon, the sound of her mother's gentle footsteps sounded in the hallway, and Sable didn't feel as afraid. Her mother asked, How about some supper? Sable nodded and leapt to her feet, keeping a good distance between herself and the coffee table as she walked to the kitchen. She set the table with two bowls, two spoons, and two napkins while her mother fussed over the stew. She sat down as her mother ladled the broth into her bowl, her mouth watering at the delicious smell. They both buttered their rolls and sipped milk while waiting for the stew to cool down. Sable took a bite of her roll and thought about the noise coming from inside her special package. Mother said, You're awfully quiet. Are you feeling okay? Sable nodded thoughtfully and continued chewing her bread. Mother blew on a spoonful of broth and brought it delicately to her lips. After, she said, Was there something you wanted to ask me right before Jeffrey started crying? Sable remembered and said, Is Daddy coming home soon? If the bad guys are good guys now. Mother frowned and looked down at her bowl of steamy broth. That is a good question, Sable. I wish I knew the answer. He could come home any time, I guess, but he could also be gone for another six months or so. He hasn't been told yet. Oh, it sounded much like Mother's other answers, which Sable never understood. They finished their soup in silence, then picked up their dishes and brought them to the sink. Mother smiled at Sable and said, Are you excited to open up your package from Daddy? Sable nodded yes, though in her heart, she wasn't so sure anymore. Mother said, I'm excited too. Let's go into the living room and open it up. Sable reached for her mother's hand, though she had hardly done that since she was in the first grade now, and they walked into the living room together and knelt before the coffee table. Sable tapped her finger once on the package and listened. Mother said, What are you waiting for, Sable? She said, I'm listening. Listening for what? Sable glanced up at her mother. To see if it scratches back. Her mother frowned at this. Scratches? Sable nodded her head. Will you open it, Mommy? Mother tilted her head to the side, her frown deepening. I suppose if you want me to, honey. Sable nodded and sat back on her knees as her mother slipped her fingers inside the edges of the brown paper and gently pulled away the packaging tape. They both gasped at what lay underneath. An ancient-looking box with carving on top. It was about as long as a shoebox, but narrower. Mother picked up the box and set it back down. It's awfully light. I wonder what could be inside. Sable nodded and reached out her fingers to trace the symbol etched into the box. It looked like the capital I with a line over the top and bottom and an additional line through the middle. Her mother said, I've seen this symbol before, but I can't remember where. Somewhere in my studies. She pointed to the top line. This represents heaven. Then she pointed at the middle line. This is mankind. And the bottom line means earth. 
What does that mean? Sable scrunched up her face and thought. It means the three are united in eternal life. Go ahead and take off the lid. Let's see what's inside. Hmm. Sable didn't understand what that meant exactly, but she was definitely curious about what was in the box. She had returning hopes that maybe it was a gerbil after all. Nothing could prepare her for what she saw when she lifted the lid. They both gasped for a second time. It was fragile and slender, with milk skin smooth as glass and hair as black as midnight. Her body was wrapped in a crimson silk with tiny white flowers. Blue ribbons bound her dainty feet. Sable gently touched the edge of her dress, her eyes drawn toward the doll's hands. Long, fragile fingers peeked out of the garment. The nails were painted blood red, the same color as the dress. Sable frowned. Had this been what was making the noises inside the box? Her mother drew in her breath and let it out. Sable, isn't this gorgeous? Your father bought you a china doll. She lifted the doll gently out of the box and held it in front of Sable. Look at her eyes, how lifelike they are. Why, they seem to be looking right at you. Sable looked from the doll's nails to her face. Dark irises glowed within the milk of the eyes. From the hall, Jeffrey cried lightly. Her mother handed the doll off to Sable and said, I'll be right back. She stood and left the room with quiet footsteps. And that was when Sable saw it. The china doll blinked. Sable dropped the doll back into the box and leapt to her feet. She walked backwards towards the fire, and as she did, the china doll's eyes followed her. Mother walked out with Jeffrey. He was cheerful now. She sat him down by the coffee table, took a pillow from the couch and put it behind him in case he fell, and handed him his three favorite toys. A brown teddy bear with its nose chewed off, a coral rubber ring that he liked to chew on, and a blue rattle. He chose the teddy bear and went to work chewing on its snout. Mother settled back down at the coffee table and picked up the doll. Well, she's just beautiful, don't you think? Sable nodded. What's wrong, honey? Don't you want to play with her? Sable thought quickly, not wanting to disappoint her mother. I'm afraid I'll break her. Oh, her mother said. I suppose she does look fragile. Look at these little fingers. She stroked them with her thumb. And the bound up feet. Sable did reach out and touch those. She had heard about young Chinese girls having to wrap their feet in ribbons. She said, Do you think the ribbons hurt her feet? Oh, she's just a doll, sweetheart. She doesn't feel anything at all. But back in ancient times, it was tradition to bind up young girls' feet like this. And that did hurt. Sable glanced down at her bare toes. She could hardly stand to wear socks. Why did they make them do it? Tradition. It was something that their society felt was important. From the package, Mother lifted the blue ribbon the doll had lain on and withdrew a pole and a small oak base. Oh, that was something Sable would have to think about later when she was lying in bed, bored. But somehow, she didn't think she would feel very bored tonight. Quite the opposite, in fact. Mother set the pole inside the oak base. Look at this. She comes with a stand. Would you like her in your room? I think she'd look quite lovely on your dresser. She stood and picked up the doll in the stand. Sable was positive that she just saw the doll blink again. No! She couldn't get the words out fast enough. Her mother paused and tilted her head. Are you okay? It just blinked at me. Her mother smiled. Oh, honey, your imagination. Okay, not your room. How about here? She stepped to a short bookcase beside the fireplace and set the stand up, then braced the doll against it, placing its curved arm delicately around the pole. When Mother looked at her to see what she thought, Sable saw the doll's tiny fingers grasp the pole. Sable didn't answer, but gulped. 
Sable, what do you say? I think she looks lovely there. Jeffrey flapped his arms and gurgled. Mother laughed. Jeffrey likes it too. She swept the toddler up into her arms. Are you hungry, Jeff Jeff? Would you like your supper? Jeffrey drooled in response. The mother said, I'm going to go feed Jeffrey now. I think I saw a note somewhere inside the package. Why don't you scavenge around for it? She turned and walked back into the kitchen. Sable watched her leave, then glanced at the china doll at the top of the bookshelf. It stared straight ahead, and for the time being, did not blink. Satisfied, Sable turned back to the packaging. She held up the brown paper and shook, and sure enough, a folded note fell from it. Sable carefully unfolded it and smiled when she saw her daddy's handwriting. She sanded out every word carefully in her mind before she read it out loud. Thanks for tuning into the show. If you've enjoyed today's story and want to know more, check out Mavs's website at darksoftlytales.com and click on the podcast tab. Like Mav on Twitter at darksoftlytales or join her Facebook page at Mavsky. Please remember to follow and leave a review on iTunes to keep the podcast going and growing.